as Dr. Shada just mentioned, that the indirect cost of using not using pump is probably higher than the cost of using pump, especially with the closed loop system. You know, uh, it is it is going to help people gaining ears. Now, the pump here is mostly being taken care of by diabetes educators and the registered, uh, you know, uh, there are diabetes nurse practitioners type of model. So we see the patients once in six months or so uh, if they are in pump uh, because we have to just look into the complication part uh, because you don't want to, of course, we are, you don't want to be just glucocentric. So you want to look at the complication part and uh, you know other stuff and the people like the the nurse practitioners the psychologists the podiatrists the educators they all doing working in the team so uh, the in spite of all that i see every week there are some there is someone who's coming to the emergency department having uh, you know pump but it's still you know, coming with uh, decay because of the cannula issues or the sensor they didn't change, uh, and and other factors which is more personal related factors rather than the pump related factors. You know, alcohol, drugs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the people who have been using pump, uh, the NDSS here provides the support, so they don't have to pay anything for. The consumers, but for the pump, they have to be on private health insurance, uh, which is, uh, you know, around 50% of patients do have that. So I'm not using DIY pump here, but Ajay asked me to, you know, discuss about DIY. I think the important thing from here, from our side, is that why, uh, what is the status of DIY and what we need to know as a doctor, because we are not going to program and help our patient programming DIY. Um, it is useful if you if you see, means you can't as a, as a clinician, you you won't be recommended that. You, you won't be recommending this because there will be medical legal issue if you say so. And in fact, if you are seeing a patient who is using DIY, you will you will be looking at of course all the clinical issues and, and trying to help your patient. But at the same time, uh, at least here, it's legally important that you you warn your patient that this is something which is which has not been studied well and uh, probably uh, uses may involve some risk. Uh, having said that, I have a doctor working with me at the moment uh, who has type one diabetes and she's using DIY as well. So there are people who have their choices and they do it. So the question is why we want to use that. Because before the 780G, which is now there, and the other pump which we are using, started using a lot here now is the T-Slim. I don't think T-Slim pump is available in India, but here around 20% patient on T-Slim uh, because that has control IQ. And the uh, 80% of the Metronic, Metronic has captured the bigger market and they have been tra traditionally being the you know, um, uh, big boss here. So, the patients who have been using loop, they have been using it because, or their parents uh, or carers, because they want to avoid the first and most important thing is avoiding hypoglycemia at the same time, managing hyperglycemia and probably, you know, uh, trying to achieve the better quality of life. Uh, next slide, please, if you can. So the question is, the question is that uh, how it is done. So before we, we we go that, I already mentioned that it is not FDA or other drug regulatory authorities approved. So we have to be careful. The patient really has to have the tech friendly status. So they have to be very good in technology. So they have to be good in, in you know, like uh, the patients of Dr. Sharda who was pregnant third time she lacked the basic understanding. So those are sort of, of, of diabetes per se. And if you look at the number, like 
if you look at the number of people who has iq less than 85 there are 15% people 15 15 a lot of voters so 15% people doesn't have the iq more than 85 now if you use suppose pump in that 100 people that there, there will be quite a few people who will not understand you know how to run it through the same time for diy again one has to have the very good understanding probably normal or more than normal iq and also they have to have the dedication the focus to deal with that it is not very cheap as well it doesn't it, diy doesn't mean that is going to be uh, very um, you know pocket friendly affair uh, there has been good or bad stories which we have encountered and uh, but yes it is still in use and probably uh, will remain in use for long next slide please next one so what we need need here the basic stuff which you need is you need cgm because for pump to have listen to something of course it needs something to get the sugar monitoring done because pump is not going to monitor the blood sugar itself and to have a discussion between cgm and your pump one need to have the computing hardware which includes the, there are like you know uh, like dr jyoti they mentioned the rally link uh, device which is a single board computer or even the iphone or or uh, android smartphones they all have capacities with different pumps it's very complex but with different pumps there are different gadgets which are friendly and can be used next slide please so this is a picture actually i took it uh, from uh from the publication in which the patient of course was a part of the publication and this is his uh, picture in which as you can see the first on top left hand side corner there is a cgm device which is freestyle libre uh followed by you see a phone so that data is being transferred from there to the iphone via bluetooth and then there is a algorithm which is being used by the app in the phone and that data is being processed through royal link or the cloud based system so if you have the cloud based system so there is a night scout which can work in the same way and then it is being transferred to the pump to adjust the boluses and the basal so that is basically the snapshot so the patient has to carry these four things with with the pump of course the cgm as well as a phone plus minus a royal link or some other single processor unit next please now the the compatible pumps uh which are there the the dana r and dana rs so pretty old pump you know it was designed by a korean endocrinologist and uh, uh you know it good to see that because i can i, I know that ajay itself ajay himself has a lot of interest in technology i think so he may be the next pump designer for india anyway let's see uh and then rosh uh and the old metronic and omnipod so these are the pumps like omnipod of course is the only patch pump as we now uh which is available it has been available in us for a long time uh, but recently came to australia as well so we are tr trying to get uh, you know some more experience with omnipod um it is yet not available with the closed loop system but i i hope it will come soon um the cgm system which are compatible uh, which people use in diy or dexcom which is now g6 as we know uh and metronic of course uh, the um, metronic in light and uh, the freestyle libre uh -huh. and my myo and dex uh, guardian and and all these things they have been compatible as to be used by as a cgm system in in uh, diy next please uh so the 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 there are only two systems for synchronization uh as i mentioned the cloud based the night scout and and myo myo next please 
uh, and the interface devices means the hardware. I think we discussed about that. The hardware this can be a small computer or your Android or iPhone. And next one. So if you talk about the interface devices, uh, there has been now the Apple smartwatch and the Pebble smartwatch. The people are using that. Uh, for the Bluetooth based interface, the, the parents are using, uh, they're making their own web, uh, web uh, website and they're using the, the Windows or Mac to monitor the blood sugar of their kids and even uh, uh, micro bolusing for hyperglycemia while the kids are in the school, which has been fantastic. So I think this is the, uh, you know, such a um, wonderful thing with technology and Sabun, and hopefully it will be more refined. Um, and by doing so, um, there are less chances of hypoglycemia as we know that recurrent hypoglycemia is a risk factor for the neurocognitive development. So you do not want very tight control of like 6.5% or something for the kids who are like 10 years of age because that neurohypoglycemia or neuroglycopenia may ultimately lead to behavioral disorders, which is not so uncommon in type 1 diabetic kids. And also, uh, you know, uh, the drop in the IQ, which has been well studied. Uh, and uh, if you want to assess the efficacy, uh, Dr. Unnikrishnan uh, did mention, of course, about time in range and uh, uh, glycemic variability was mentioned earlier in the talk, which is all there. And we have to assess the efficacy based on that number. So once you do the number, it is easy to assess and easy to compare. Next, please. So just a, a cautionary tale, it is probably my second last slide, that the evidence for hybrid closed loop system using open source code is limited uh, to observational studies and uh, it is self-reported patient outcomes and anecdotal reports. Hence, we need to be very careful in prescribing, advising, uh, uh, and uh, there may be the medical legal implication and insurance issues. Um, and there may be issues with the gadgets as well. Next one. So what we need to know that it has not been approved or appraised by the, the, the regulatory bodies. Uh, but if the patient comes to us, we can't say that, okay, you should not be using that and no. I think it is all a good idea for advise them, help them, let them know that, okay, this is the way. We can help you, but be cautious. Thank you very much. I think I finished on time.